here's how you can make your own face covering in a few easy steps. Warning, if you follow the Surgeon General's advice about how to make a face mask, you could die. Hi everybody, I'm Sean Carlson. Welcome back to the Citizen Scientist Workshop Zombie Apocalypse Edition. Today, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to construct and maintain simple but effective face masks to protect the people you love from contagion. First, you're going to need a way to test the effectiveness of your mask. Well, here's a mask that one of my kids made for me. To test it, we turn on a flashlight and dim the lights. Then, we position the mask as you see here and use a spray bottle to spritz a blast of water into the fabric. If some of the droplets make it through, like this, then the mask won't protect you. I love you, darling, but daddy ain't going to be wearing this outside. You can use this same technique to discover how many layers of a given fabric you'll need to protect you. A single layer of this bed sheet doesn't cut it, but two layers passes the test. While a single layer of this cashmere scarf clearly beats a bed sheet, some of the mist still gets through. But double it up and it seems to be okay. It's not surprising that a single layer of towel cloth blocks the mist. After all, towels were specifically designed to absorb water. If you look close, you'll see that they're covered with all sorts of little nooks and crannies to capture moisture. And so I've decided to make all of the masks for my family from a single layer of this material. First, I need to measure the size of my face. To do that, I'm going to cut two pieces of string, one which runs from just below the bridge of my nose to the soft palate under my chin, and the other that runs down across my face from just about one centimeter or so in front of my ears. So lay out a freshly washed towel, and since these bands are decorative, not functional, I'm going to use a sharp pair of scissors to crop them off. Next, use your two pieces of string to lay down, mark up, and cut out a rectangle that fits your face. Now, the Surgeon General recommends placing rubber bands around your ears to attach the mask to your face, but if you have to wear it for very long, they are not very comfortable. I think you'll find hair ties to be a much better choice. As I'll explain in a moment, if you want to avoid the pandemic, then you need to make certain that your masks do not fall apart when you take them off. So I hold mine together with, what else, duct tape. Start by attaching the hair ties to the sides of the mask, as shown here. And since I prefer to slay my zombies in style, I use designer duct tape for this next step with a sporty camouflage pattern, which I picked up at my local hardware store. Tear off a couple of pieces of whatever you happen to have on hand and wrap them around the ends of the mask as shown. Next, you'll want to make the mask a bit more fitted to your face by folding in and taping the corners of the mask, as you see here. And finally, to keep the bottom of the mask fitted to your chin, turn up the bottom about one centimeter at the center and then secure it in place with a smidge of tape. And there it is, your zombie apocalypse face mask is ready for action. Ta-da! So what's my problem with the Surgeon General's mask? It's simple. If you don't want to die, there's something you absolutely have got to understand. The virus will live on whatever surface it lands on, including your mask, for days. So you absolutely must sterilize your mask every time you come home. That's easy to do. Just spray it down with some rubbing alcohol or 120 proof vodka or run a little soap solution through it. But you must kill the virus because if you don't, then just handling the mask could spread the virus into your home. But the Surgeon General didn't mention the absolute need to sterilize your mask. And his homemade mask is so flimsy that it tends to fall apart when you take it off. So what's going to happen the next time someone refolds this still contaminated fabric or just reverses it and puts it over their nose and mouth? That's right. It's highly likely that a contaminated surface will cover the user's face so that every breath will pull virus into their lungs. That's why I made this video. So if you understand the danger, please help this video go viral. Share it with your family and colleagues, smash the like and subscribe buttons, and please stay safe out there so that we can all see each other in the next one.